Hey guys, it's Scott with a Bass Tank. Uh, today we're going to talk about our quick draw contours. So our, our Garmin units have the ability to draw lakes that uh, may not be mapped. You know, my favorite lake to go fish has no contours on it. And so I, I spent a lot of time actually graphing and, and creating contours. I found features that I didn't know existed uh, because I drew the map. Um, so what I've done is I've committed myself to every time I come out, I just draw, take one pass and draw one more section. So uh, over the course of time, I'm gonna have the entire lake map. So come on over to the screen and I'll, I'll walk you through this and, and show you how it works. All right guys, so now we're sitting here on the water and I've got my maps pulled up. And what I wanna do is I want to, you can see that this, this lake just has no contours to it. So what I wanna do is I want to draw my lake. So what I'm gonna do is from this map screen, I'm gonna hit menu Instantly it comes up quick draw contours. And so what I'm gonna do is, this is gonna tell me what the name of the file is. This is gonna tell me the card slot it's in. This is gonna tell me the date it was last modified. So if I wanted to change that, I just come in here to manage the active card. So I've got a unit up front, I could save to that one. Memory card slot one, memory card slot two of this unit. I selected memory card slot two the name, I just named it Lake X. I could copy, delete, move. We're good here. So again, I, I, I said slot two, I apologize, I actually selected slot one. What I wanna do is I wanna select display. So that's actually gonna show my contours that I've drawn. And then when I'm ready, I just hit start recording. I get this nice green circle. Again, that indicates I'm locked onto the bottom. All right guys, so we've been trolling around with our um, you know, quick contours uh, drawn. And as you can see, I, I've got a pretty good idea of what's going on with this. You know, this is my deepest water, my next level, so forth, so on and so forth. So I've got red zero to five foot, orange five to 10, blue 10 to 15, so on and so forth. I don't have to set in five foot increments. I just do, it's simple. Uh, we'll discuss depth shading here in just a little bit because um, there's times I use this to break down a lake and I'll just highlight two colors um, when I'm, you know, when I target fish in a specific depth and I, um, but anyway, this is what, you know, quick draw contours looks like, you know, this is a pretty good map right here. Um, it's allowed me to, to find some things that, I, that I didn't specifically know before about this lake and I fish this lake a lot. So, um, stay tuned. We'll, we'll get into a few more things here and, uh, we'll talk about depth shading. All right, guys, let's talk about depth shading for just a second. You see the different colors that I've got here. Um, you know, I've got, you know, I use red as my do not run the boat into. I may troll in there, but I'm not going to actually run on pad up into there. Um, and then I just, these are my color palettes. They, they work the best for me. But let's say you want to change these. Go to your menu. Now these are quick draw. So I've drawn these. So I'm going to go inside my quick draw. I'm going to go to settings. I've got depth shading turned on. I'm just going to select over here. And these are my, you know, you can see what I've got them set up as. So let's say that, that I want to add a new depth range. And let's say I want this to be, um, I don't know, we'll make it great, kind of make it stand out a little bit. I'm going to set my minimum depth. And let's say I'm looking for something that's six and eight to eight foot. I'm targeting fish in six to eight foot of water. I'm gonna hit done, it shows up here. Now there's an overlap here, so what I'm gonna do is then I'm gonna change this, this color to be six foot. Um, now that's not very much deviation there, but, but that's fine. Um, and then I'm gonna change my, my one that was 10 to 15, I'm gonna change it from 10 to eight. So now that I've got that sandwiched in there, so now we're gonna come back here. Let's take a look at what this looks like. And so now you can see I've got this gray sandwich in there. So now let's say that I, I find a fish that, that are hanging out in six to eight foot of water, but they've gotta be close to 20 foot of water. Well, I know, I know that my green and purple is 20. So what I'm looking for is anywhere that gray 
gets close to that purple. As you can see in here, I don't really have that, so I'm gonna skip over this, this area. You know, this isn't an area that I'm gonna be targeting to, um, you know, if I'm, I'm looking for those fish. So I, I set my, my gray to be, you know, six to eight foot of water, and, and like I said, if I was trying to target that range, but it had to be close to deep water, you know, this is a, an area that I would be interested in. I'm, I've got my six to eight foot, and then I've got, you know, 20 foot out here, 15 to 20 foot, just right off of it. Um, so this would be something that I would, you know, I would probably drop a waypoint on as a point of interest. Now, what makes this advantageous is I don't have to go look at that. I can go through here and I can set these, um, you know, just from my graph, and then I can run to them. I'm not spending a lot of time searching and looking. I can set my waypoints and go. The other thing that's really cool is that I can actually do this on my active captain. I can set my waypoints, I can set my depth shading the same, then I can connect my active captain to my unit, sync those waypoints, and then I've got my areas of interest to go look at before I've ever set foot on the water. Again, going back to that, making myself more efficient on the water. So stay tuned, we'll talk about more of those things, how everything ties together, and uh, go from there, but that's depth shading.